Greetings YouTube, welcome to Zero AD Newbie Rush, I'm Jim Kogan. In my previous tutorial, we looked at improving your key Zero AD skills, making multiple units, rallying points and using control groups. If you haven't seen that, a link should be appearing on the screen right now for you to go back and check that out. But if you're ready to move on to the next steps, here are three more essential tips for new Zero AD players. Tip 1. Stacking orders and rally points. We've already seen how the shift key on your keyboard is handy for queuing up multiple units from your unit creating buildings. But this versatile key has other critical functions as well. One of the most useful is stacking. We all know that selecting a unit and right clicking to an area sends that unit to that place. And if your click destination is a resource, they begin gathering that resource. You click elsewhere, they stop their current task and go there instead. But if you instead shift click, you can get stacked orders for your unit. Here, I'm sending this unit to a series of waypoints by shift clicking. And this applies to tasks as well. Here I've ordered these units to build a house, then walk over to the wood line and build a storehouse. And finally, I've instructed them to start gathering wood. This can be really useful when you want to get units to stop doing their current assigned task, do something else and then return to the original task without having to micro and monitor them the whole time. In this example, I've instructed these female citizens to briefly stop farming, to build a house and then return to their farms. Once I've stacked their orders, I can leave them to it. And here, these miners are about to fully deplete the resource they are gathering. Ordinarily, they would just stop and do nothing when they run out of stuff to mine until you give them further instructions. But in this example, I've stacked orders for them to relocate to another mine so they carry on working. This is a brilliantly efficient way to ensure that your units don't end up idle while you're distracted tending to other things. And you can also stack tasks via rallying points as well. Select unit producing structure and set the rallying point as usual by right clicking. Then shift click to add additional instructions. In this example, these units emerge from the CC and build a house, then immediately go off to gather wood. This can also be used for effectively automating scouting units to go to all parts of the map you want them to check out. An extra quick tip, you can assign waypoints much more generally by shift clicking on the mini map as well. Set them and off he goes. And this can be tactically utilized for combat situations too. Here I've plotted a covert path for the battering ram that I've queued up from this fortress that will allow it to sneak around the opponent's territory and launch a surprise attack on their base. So stacking will make you much more efficient by automating a lot of your micro, helping to eliminate the chances of units falling idle, and when used skillfully, can aid you in scouting and attacking.
Tip two, eliminating idleness. Despite your best efforts, even the very best players sometimes commit the cardinal sin of allowing units to go idle. Whether it's accidentally letting them go idle when they deplete a resource or accidentally microing them to an empty area instead of assigning them to a resource, it's very easily done. As I advised in the first tutorial, your own inefficiency is almost as big an enemy to you as your opponent, but luckily there are a few handy ways to minimise accidental idleness, or at least rectify it very quickly. There is a very handy visual indicator located just to the side of the minimap. When it's greyed out, all of your units are currently engaged in useful activity. When it shows brown, well, you know you have at least one unit somewhere not doing anything. This indicator is small and subtle. It's very easy to forget to look at it, but always try to keep an eye on it between tasks. Having identified that the heinous crime of idleness is happening, if you then click on the indicator, you'll cycle through all your currently idle units one at a time, so you can send them off to be useful again. You can also use a handy hotkey for this. It's the full stop or period key. If you find you have a whole load of idle units shirking their responsibilities, cycling through them one at a time can be tedious and very inefficient. You can try and select them all as a group if they're close together, but if your idle units are located closely to working units, you could mess this up easily and end up missing some of the slackers and worse still, accidentally selecting some of the ones that are actually working to incorrectly go and do something else. Thankfully, there is another handy hotkey for group selecting only the idle units. If you hold down the I key and select the group, only those lazy, work-shy little suckers will get included in the selection, and you can swiftly assign them all together. Whilst doing this, shouting, get back to work, you lazy cretins, is entirely optional. Tip three, healing your wounded units. Zero AD is ultimately about warfare. Conflict, by its very nature, is a dangerous business, and inevitably your poor units will take damage. Ignore your unit's health at your peril, for while they may make it back from a risky scouting mission or a skirmish with their lives, and they won't show too many ill effects if you set them back to work in your territory, units on low health are extremely easy pickings in the event of a sneaky raid by your opponent and they are positively useless in the face of a larger assault, as they will all be slain too easily. When it's your turn to attack, you want your army as strong as possible. Your troops will get decimated incredibly quickly if they're not all fighting fit. You can heal your units in a few ways. The most common is garrisoning them in your CC or in a temple, or even in a barracks if you have the building upgrade for this. Temples are especially useful as they also heal units in close proximity without you having to garrison them, albeit at a more gradual rate. So it can be useful to have these buildings near resource gathering areas so you can heal units while they work and continue to be efficient. And temples also allow you to produce priest units that can offer portable healing on the move. And there are a number of upgrades available from the temple to improve the healing rate and range of your priests, and even make your units automatically regenerate their health slowly over time. These upgrades are often overlooked, so they could give you a decent advantage over your opponent if used wisely. And finally, there is a hotkey that lets you group select your most wounded units. This works similarly to using the hotkey for selecting idle units, only this time you use the O key. You can then send your heroic battered war heroes out of harm's way, or get them into a healing building to restore them back to fighting fitness and ready to return to the front line to socket to your enemy once more. So there you go, three more little tips to hopefully help you out on your journey to becoming a more competitive 0AD player.
I appreciate, again, that experienced campaigners should already know all of this stuff. But if you're new to the game, I hope you found this useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And please do suggest anything else you think would be useful to cover in future tutorials. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do leave a comment, drop a like, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified of future episodes. If you'd like one of your matches featured on the show, see the video description of how you can submit your replays. And if you can't wait for the next episode, then why not check out these playlists in the end titles for more replays, commentary and tutorials on Zero AD Newbie Rush. I'll see you in the next video.